Hey guys, in last video we looked at PTAT and CTAT voltages. In this video we will see different ways to combine these two voltages to generate a temperature independent band gap voltage. So in last video we derived these PTAT and CTAT voltage equations. So here we have two aims. One is to make these two slopes equal. And next is to combine these two voltages to form the band gap reference voltage. So we notice that in PTAT equation we have this parameter n which is basically the ratio of two devices or ratio of two currents. So one simple solution may be to choose n in such a way that these two slopes become equal. So let's see what value of n will be required. So if we put this value and do the calculation we get this value which is more than 12 billion. Obviously it is impractical to have a device ratio of 1 to 12 billion. So we can discard this option to be very impractical. Our next option is to somehow amplify the PTAT voltage. Let's choose the value of n to be a more reasonable value of say 8. So in order to match the slopes of PTAT and CTAT we need to amplify PTAT by around 11. And this amplification needs to be very accurate so that we don't introduce errors and inaccuracies. The most popular way to do it is to change the PTAT voltage into a PTAT current and then pass that current into a bigger register to create bigger PTAT voltage. So the whole process looks something like this. First we somehow drop the PTAT voltage across the resistor R1 that creates a PTAT current. And then that PTAT current is flown into a second resistor R2 and we get an amplified PTAT voltage. Notice that this is a ratio metric amplification. Meaning to say that the gain of the amplification depends on the ratio of two similar devices. And that is why it is a very accurate way of achieving the required gain. So let's see how we can build this kind of circuit. So we start with two diode D1 and D2 which have a ratio of 1 is to N. It simply means that D2 is a parallel connection of N identical diodes. Now if conditions are right then PTAT voltage would appear across these two terminals. So let's put our first register. Now if for the moment we assume that the voltages V1 and V3 are equal and also that these two branches have same current then voltage across R1 is our PTAT voltage. So in order for this circuit to work we need to ensure that V1 and V3 are equal and these two branches have same current. And one way to achieve these two conditions is to use feedback. So here we have got a high gain differential amplifier and two identical PMOS transistors which act as a controlled current source. The purpose of this high gain amplifier is to make sure that the voltages V1 and V3 are equal. And the purpose of these PMOS transistors acting as controlled current source is to make sure that the current in these two branches are equal. Now let's try to figure out which terminal goes to the positive terminal of amplifier and which goes to the negative. Now there is a simple way to look at it and there is a complicated way to look at it. In this video I will take the simple way which ignores some subtleties but works just as fine to figure out the polarity of the amplifier. Recall that the voltage across diode is rather insensitive to the current into it. That means small changes in the current do not change its voltage a lot. Now let's assume for some reason current in these two branches drops. In order to recover this drop in the current this feedback needs to increase the gate to source voltages of these PMOSes. Now voltage V1 doesn't change much with this drop in the current because it is the voltage across a diode. The same goes to V2. But voltage across R1 does change because of this change in current. So overall V3 reduces. So we see that the polarity of V3 and the output of amplifier are same. And that means V3 should go to the positive terminal of this amplifier. Now there is a complicated argument to arrive the same conclusion which uses the concept of negative and positive feedback around the loop but that is for another video. So once we set up this loop properly we get PTAT current in these branches. So now we can push this PTAT current into a register to get our amplified PTAT voltage. So we have achieved our first objective of getting a PTAT voltage. As for second objective which is adding PTAT and CTAT voltages. Remember that we can add two voltages simply by putting them on the top of each other. 
now our seated voltage is simply the voltage across a diode so if we add a diode in this branch it should do the job and finally here we are our band gap reference voltage so what is the value of this voltage so VREF is the sum of VCTAT and VPTAT and here are the equations of VCTAT and VPTAT now we have designed the PTAT voltage such that its slope exactly cancels the CTAT voltage slope and we are left with VBG which is approximately the silicon band gap voltage and this voltage is approximately 1.2 volts. Now we can generate this reference voltage in slightly different way. So notice that diodes are already available in these two branches. So can we do away with this third branch? Indeed we can by putting this R2 in these two branches instead. So here we have the same reference voltage with slightly less number of components. In fact there are many more ways to rearrange this circuit. Now all these configurations have their own pro and cons which we will discuss in another video. Now band gap circuits are not only used to generate reference voltages but also the bias currents. We can reuse PTAT current flowing in these branches as bias current. Now this band gap architecture is one of the most widely used band gap architecture. But there are some disadvantages. First is design complexity because of the amplifiers. For some simple application designing and compensating amplifier may look like a lot of work. Second is the value of VRF voltage which is restricted to the band gap voltage which is around 1.2 volts. If you need another voltage say 1 volt then you need to put another amplifier to do the job. Third limitation comes from the requirement of minimum supply in order to get the correct voltage. Recall that these two PMOSes act as current source that means they need to operate in saturation region. So if VREF is 1.2 volt and we assume around 200 to 300 millivolt across VDS of these PMOSes then we need at least 1.4 to 1.5 volts as supply. And if we add cash code to this stage then requirement becomes even higher. Another disadvantage is variation of PTAT current over temperature and process corners if it is used as bias current. Current increases by 70% from minus 40 degree Celsius temperature to 125 degree Celsius temperature. And if we also add the process variation of resistor on the top of it then ratio of the maximum current to minimum current can be more than 2. Now no one architecture can address all these issues. But there are alternate architectures which can address some of these. Now if design complexity and the area increased by the use of amplifier is your main concern then there is another architecture which can be considered. Recall that in order for this circuit to work the voltage across and current into these two branches should be equal. One way to ensure these two conditions is to put a current conveyor on the top of it. So let's see how this works. The current mirror formed by PMOS P1 and P2 ensures that current in these two branches are equal. Coming to N MOSes, these have same gate voltages and same current flowing through it. As a result, they have same gate to source voltages making V1 and V2 equal. Obviously in order for this to work, sizes of P1 and P2 are equal. Similarly, sizes of N1 and N2 are equal. So this current conveyor circuit ensures that R1 has PTAT voltage across it and hence PTAT current in these two branches. And we already know the next step if we have the PTAT current available. Now this circuit solves our complexity and area problem. But other problems are still there, maybe even worse. So let's now look at another architecture which solves almost every problem. So far we have considered adding CTAT and PTAT voltages to generate our reference voltage. But that is not the only option. We can also think of adding PTAT and CTAT current to generate the reference voltage. In fact we already have the PTAT current. We just need to find a way to generate the CTAT current. Now we already have the CTAT voltage in form of V1 and V2. So if we think very simply, if we put a resistor across these voltages this resistor should have CTAT current. But is it that simple? Yes indeed it is. So let's start again. So we got a diode which is biased by a constant current. We have already seen that the voltage across this diode is CTAT. Now if we put a resistor in parallel to this diode 
then voltage across this resistor would also be set at and if r doesn't change with the temperature then current flowing into it will also be a set at current okay now let's put everything together so we start with our family structure to generate the ptat current and we put another resistor across this structure so here branch containing r1 will have ptat current and branch containing r2 will have ctat current and now we put all the infrastructure in place to make voltages and currents equal and if we choose the value of r1 and r2 just right we can make the total current temperature independent here z stands for zero now to generate the reference voltage we simply dump this current into another resistor so as you can see we don't need to put a diode anymore to generate the reference voltage and this is because current itself is now temperature independent now by choosing different value of resistance or different value of currents we can generate any desired reference voltage this band gap architecture is known as compensated current band gap architecture or banba architecture banba is the author of the famous paper which described this architecture as you can see we can now generate any reference voltage removing one of the drawbacks of the conventional architecture at the same time this architecture requires lower supply voltages total supply requirement is the voltage across diode plus the voltage across this pmos transistor these two add up to as low as 1 volt the spread of resultant bias current has also reduced considerably the bias current spread now only has the spread due to the process variation of resistor which can be as low as plus minus 20% the only remaining drawback is the design complexity and the area increased due to this amplifier but this is not bad at all given the advantages this architecture provides as a matter of fact as supply voltages continue to reduce this has become the default band gap architecture okay so in this video we have looked at three most commonly used band gap architectures we have overlooked many details and design considerations in this video I will cover some of these in more details in the future videos. In the very next video, I will consider another very important aspect of band gap circuits, and that is the startup. But for now, please post your comments below and thanks for watching.